Hello everybody, this is Raw with a Kerbal Space Program video yet again. Hope everybody's doing great. So I'm going to show you some, you know, stuff that I've been up to. So the other day, I was just messing around, wondering what was the smallest ship I could make. So I made this, this is a jet-powered EVE Online escape pod, if you ask me, that's what it looks like. Those of you who play EVE know exactly what I'm talking about. And I was flying this around and kind of having fun with it and seeing what I could do. And I put a parachute on it, and I kind of stumbled upon something. So the plan was that I'd fly over something, shut off the engine, let it coast till it started to drop, and then open a parachute. And just let it crash. But then, I realized that the control wheel, the parachute, and a jet engine with very little throttle could actually let me maneuver it around some. I kind of tow the parachute behind me. What I was noticing is the offset parachute and the one control wheel made it sort of a pain in the butt to drive. And I have to keep correcting it. The SAS can't hold it. And eventually even I can't hold it by hitting, smashing down the W all the way. So that's when I got the idea to make an actual uh, powered paraglider, a jet powered paraglider, but specifically designed to run, you know, uh, to be more maneuverable. So, here's what I ended up making. I'll be the first to admit it is the buffugliest thing you've ever seen in your life. It's really ugly. But it's kind of fun to fly. So as you can see, the cockpit's angled down, the, the so is the engine, but the other way, the parachute's quite not quite straight, the wheels are weird, but it works really well. Let me kind of show you how this thing works. So it has two SAS wheels, so it's very stable and very easy to turn. This is as a jet engine running, it's never going to run out of power. So say a slant. I never throw it up to more than about two thirds because there's no need. So much power for so little craft. You just do a wheelie and just take off almost straight up. But as soon as you're in the air, cut it down a little over a third and pop your chute. What this lets you do is this thing is very easy to control and flies so nice and slow. It's you can just do anything you want with it. I was thinking that if I ever get into making like some kind of other video, I I could use this cockpit view for some slow panning shots of stuff. This is why I angled the cockpit down because this way, even though technically the engine's firing straight down and the plane's sort of flying in another weird direction, I can still look forward and keep a steady flight. I mean, it, it's traveling at 14 meters per second. That's nothing. Most cars go faster than that. And uh, with the control that it has, I've been able to fly it through, you know, the the tunnel and under the bridge and all that kind of good stuff. I mean, it's really easy to, easy to fly. I specifically wanted to be able to fly it out of cockpit mode because it's kind of a pain in the butt to be driving a ship with that parachute behind there. You can't really see what's going on. As you can imagine, it's very easy to land. Well, when you don't crash. But if you do crash, you're going so slow that you're not going to get anybody killed. I'd actually put a ladder in it so you could get out and repack the chute. <laughs> Except the chute got blown off. So, other things that I was making. And these are, are only possible because of the new patch. I was making some solar ion powered planes. So here's some uh, shout-outs on that, or some call-outs if you guys want to do this. First and foremost, let's talk some physics. When you're building an ion-powered anything, mass is the key. The lower the mass, the better. Now, I like the wheels, so even though I know I can save mass doing that, when I first built these, I put a, a girder and um, that makes no sense at all because the girder is way heavier than this long line of cubic octags. See, each one of these only has a 0 .001 mass. While the girder has like 0 .375. So each one of those girders weighs the same as 375 cubic octags. This is only, you know, 
like 10 cubic cocktacks. So it's a 30th of the mass for exactly the same type thing. But this allows us to have a very stable plane with very big wings, so it has a lot of a lot of uh, lift and a lot of area to put solar panels. The other thing that I figured out by extensive trial and error or was with the way that the new ion engines work, you need 22, or I would recommend 22 solar panels per each ion engine. You can do it with like 18 or I think even 16, it'll be stable. But what happens is you'll run out of power. And when you turn, I mean, let's say that you flip it over and you no longer have power coming in from the panels. You'll turn it over and aim it at the sun and it'll take an eternity to recharge. So with 22, it charges pretty fast. But doesn't, you know, compromise as far as the mass. Oh, sometimes he lands it, sometimes he doesn't. So yeah, this is the lightest weight little tail dragger you could ever make. So this is sort of what I mean about the the power. With the new power of the iron engines, because now they're like four times stronger, and with this little angled tail thing so that the wings are aiming up, it just takes off. And this is no uh, physics shenaniganry. This is not, you know, an infinity glider. I'm not flapping wings or anything. Though, unfortunately, I wish I knew how to stop it from flapping its wings. Because every now and then I'll be flying it around. And, I mean, it'll get going to 50 meters per second, you know, on a steady climb. But I'll be, you know, throwing it around the, the, the VAB doing, you know, little stunt things or whatever. And find myself going over 100 meters per second, even though I'm not flapping. So yeah, the physics aren't quite working. And then when it starts to get in this little wobble, which I'm not making it do, it's doing by itself, it just keeps accelerating sometimes. I found out that if you just do a loop-to-loop -loop straight up and down like that, you just start picking up crazy amounts of speed out of nowhere. Just free speed. The other good thing about having the external pilot, which doesn't happen if you're just driving with the probe, is you can run out of power and still have control. But yeah, when I saw this, that just by mashing straight up, I'll go really fast. I thought I might be able to do some kind of SSTO thing with this. But this trick doesn't work in the upper atmosphere. It seems to only work here in the thick atmosphere. But yeah, even if when you're not cheating, well, also, well, if you turn the SAS off, it doesn't keep picking up speed for no reason. You can just let it burn off speed. These are actually really good to fly without SAS, just using the, the trim. You can... You can get them under control. So that's that one. I also, using the same body and wing configuration, I made a twin engine one. But the actual power to weight ratio doesn't go up so much because the most hev the the heaviest thing in the plane is the engine. So by doubling the engine, I really increased the weight, and the actual power that it has isn't much more. You can see, so that one has 44 solar panels. And another little trick to make these as light as possible is with the the rear controls. You see here, I have the winglet. I mean, the control surface just stuck on a cubic octagonal strut. That means you have almost no weight, and you can have you know full control of it. Let me take this one off just cuz. So while I'm flying this one around, and I'm, I'm going to use just elevator trim so it doesn't, you know, infinite glide on me. I wanted to talk to you guys about something that I kind of came to realize after I started making videos of my own and, you know, people started watching them. And it's the comments. The comments are really cool. I love reading comments on videos now. Well, on my videos anyway. Um, when you're just watching YouTube videos, which I did for years and years, I mean, I watched Veos and Scott Manley and, um, you know, some of the guys that play EVE Online and um, I watched Dota 2 videos like crazy. I never would really comment. It just felt like, why bother? But now that I make YouTube videos and then I get like that little notification in my email that somebody's commented and then I go in and I read the comment, it's great. It's so nice when people acknowledge that they saw your video, enjoyed it, and that they learned something from it. With that uh, hydrofoil video, 
this one guy uh, was telling me how he sails hydrofoils in real life, and now he wants to try the Incredible Space Program. And I was like, awesome! Somebody actually got something from that video, and, and it just made it all worthwhile. So now I comment the crap out of every video I see. I mean, even if it's like a Philip DeFranco video or a Veo's video that already has 45 comments that I know that's probably not going to read it. I don't care. I'm commenting. So thank you for everybody that watches my videos. And and an extra thank you to everybody that comments on the videos. You really make it all worthwhile, you guys. So hopefully some of these little tips and tricks from some of these little abominations that I've made in these last couple of weeks help you guys out in your projects. Uh, so I hope you guys have fun, and once again, thank you for watching, subscribing, and especially those who comment. This is Ra, signing out.